Hello there. Welcome to this video where you get to learn more on how you can approach various GMAT questions in the GMAT exam. And these are, in these videos, we do select questions from various topics and we work through them together with you to show you how you can approach the questions using various strategies as you learn better approaches and also probably gain a better understanding on how you can do so. My name is Joshua Obuya, trainer and a mentor with the Kenya Edit Program under the GMAT training section. Welcome aboard and I hope you will learn more. In this session, we look at uh, set some proportions questions in the data, the data sufficiency type of problems in the GMAT exam. In the last video, we looked at questions of this type, but now in the problem solving uh, section type of questions. So let's just dive right in and see how these questions can be. So first and foremost, normally it is important to know how do you approach data sufficiency questions. And this is a methodology that I do recommend and is I think is one of the best that, has, that is out there. It works for many and it helps. So the first thing you need to know your concepts with regard to the questions being asked, know all the concepts, determine what constitutes sufficiency in that question stem before you go to the, uh, to the statements. Once you've known what would actually constitute sufficiency, it will be easier for you to assess the statements. Then next, you assess each statement independently first and exhaust all possible scenarios that pertain to that statement. Then you can actually assess the statements together. If at all, you don't find them sufficient. Then next is actually, that's when you go to selecting answer choices based on how you've assessed the statements. So that is basically how it is. So. Let's dive into the questions. The first question is a sub 600 level question. These are questions which many students tend to find the correct answer without much difficulty. Hence, that's why it is in that, in that category. At the same time also, the analysis shows that these types of questions don't require much, uh, much, much effort to get the correct answer. And for that reason, that's why it can be able to get the right answer. So uh, we'll, uh, you, you can pause the video and then attempt this question. Come on. Can therefore pause the video, attempt this question, and then come back and look at it how and how I can publish it together. At a certain school, 100 students are the marching band. If 40% of the students or the students in the orchestra are also in the marching band, how many students are members of neither the orchestra nor the marching band? So whenever you see questions that tend to have two groups of, let's say, two groups being discussed about, an easier approach normally is organizing the information you have into a matrix. So that a matrix switch in, in, in the rows, you'll have one group and the columns will have another group. Presented. So that means you're looking at something like in this case, you're looking at uh, there's a marching band, and there is an orchestra. So these are the two groups we're looking at. So you have marching band, then not in marching band. That's how you can uh, label them. Then you have the orchestra and not in orchestra. So in the matrix, you have it something like this. So given the steps we have in the DS methodology, we need to, first of all, define what would cost you sufficiency. And you need to define, get to, to define that you need to know what you've been told and what haven't you been told, and therefore, what do you need to get what you've not been what you've been asked about? So we see that there are 100 students in a marching band. So this column being a marching band, this is a non-marching band, it means this column has 100 students. That's what you've been told. And then we're being told that 40% of the students in the orchestra. So you have the orchestra. Orchestra is this row right here. So the orchestra. Let's say they are X because you don't know them. So 40% of students in the orchestra are also in the marching band. So of the students in the orchestra, some are in the marching band, some are not in the marching band. So 40% are in the marching band, that is 0.4X are in the marching band. How many students are members of neither the orchestra nor the marching band? So not in the marching band, not in the orchestra. That is this section right here. So if you are able to get to know information that would help us get this, this cell right here, that would be sufficient. In this case, you're looking at knowing how many students are not in the marching band at the same, at the same time, how many students are not in the marching band are, are in the orchestra. So if you can get this information, that would help us 
uh, let's say A, B, then if you're able to get C and D as well, that will help us get these. So they do go together, C and D, they match together, A and B match together. So if you're able to get these sets of information, we are able to know what you've been asked. So anything that will not help us get these sets of information will not actually be sufficient. That is what would cause insufficient in this case. So let's go to assessing the statements one, one, one at a time. So there are a thousand students in the school. So you have a marching band, a marching band, orchestra, non orchestra. So we have 100 students in the marching band. We have x and 0.4x. That's what we're given from the question stem. So what does it want to say? It says that, we, that there are 100 students, 1,000 students in the school. So if actually you have 1,000 students in the school, what does this mean? If you have 1,000 students, it means that those who are not in the marching band are 900. And then those who are not in the orchestra are 1,000 minus x. We still don't have information about these two, and therefore we cannot be able to tell how many students are in neither of these groups. If you can't tell how many students are in either of these groups, you cannot be able to find how many students that they are, because now this, this information, it only gives us so many varieties and we can get multiple uh, answers. If you can have multiple answers, then that means that the statement is not sufficient. So in this case, statement one is not sufficient. It means all as it is. So let's go and look at the second statement. Let's assess the second statement independently. So we go back to our matrix, matching, non-matching, then orchestra, non-orchestra. So we do draw the matrix. Zero point four x a hundred, then x. That's what we had. What does the second statement say? It says that 50 students are in the orchestra. So orchestra completes those who are in the marching band, not in the marching band, that is X. So X equals to 50. Therefore, given that measured all in the question stem, 0.4X is equal to 20, right? So this cell right here, those in the marching band and in the orchestra are 20. Those who are not in the marching band and the orchestra, there are how many? They are 30. Those who are not in orchestra, but are in the marching band, they are 80. So the next thing we need to know is, we've been asked about this here. We need to know how many students do we have in total? Because here now we have 50. But how many students do we have in total in this school, in this case? We don't know. If you don't know, that means this value can be any value. How many are not in the marching band uh, altogether? If you're able to know this, you could be able to, find, to know how many are in either of the groups because you have those who are not in the orchestra. Um, at the same time, if you knew how many are not in the orchestra entirely, you'd also be able to get this. So segment two does not give us that information either. Therefore, it's not sufficient because it can be, that way you can have multiple answers. So multiple values rather. So multiple values give, make this statement not sufficient. So. With that said, now we need to combine these two statements together and see if they will be sufficient. Now, if we combine them together, we've been told that there are 1,000 students in the school. That's what the first statement says. And therefore, this is 900. And therefore, this is 870. That is, and now we have the answer. So if you combine these statements together, we get the value of how many are in neither the orchestra nor in the marching band. So that is eight. That is now the two. The two of them combined, they give us a sufficient answer. So the answer actually will be as such as C. Both statements together are sufficient, but neither statement one alone is sufficient. Neither statement alone is sufficient. So that is that is how it is. So let's go to the next one. You are watching Success with Bob Moiti Show, presented to you by Upstate America. Upstate America is a consulting company that helps immigrants find amazing higher education and job opportunities in the tech industry in the United States. You can find our programs by going to www.upstakeamerica.com. 
Upstack America, we wake you up to the unlimited potential. The next question is a 600 to 650 level question. This is These are questions which require a bit of thinking to get the correct answer. And these are questions also which are fairly, a fair amount of students tend to not get this question correct as the difficulty level, but not that they're necessarily hard. So it's all about you know, it's all about you know, applying methodology. If you can apply the concepts and have exhaustive lessons the statements, you should be able to write to the right answer. The question you're being asked is: what percentage of female students in a certain history class is majoring in economics? So you have females, and then you have history, and then you have economics. These are three groups that you do have. Uh, we'll attempt the question, then we come back to it. So address it together. So from this statement, we do have female students. And they're being asked percentage of female students in a history class who are measuring in economics. So if you had to take the whole body of female students, you do have history and non-history. Because those are the two groups you can get from this. And then you have economics and non-economics. So that will fit our matrix. So, so this one is really, really open. We don't really know the question stem anything else about the students. So all of them are female students. We just that's what you know. They're all female students. A lot of been have been asked what percentage of female students in a certain history class, this column here, is measuring in economics. So that is this cell here, economics, economics and history. So to get that percentage, you need to get X over female times 100. If you can able to get the number of X, the number of female students in that class, or in that, uh, yeah, in that history, that, or that entire class, in that entire group of students, the number of female students, and actually get the proportion which, or even just the number of students who are majoring in history and economics, then we can be able to get a proportion of students who are, or of female students who are in the history class and majoring in economics. So those many wordings, let, let them not confuse you as you try to get to, to frame your question. So with that said, if you can be able to get those details and be able to frame figure this out, then we'll be able to say if a statement is sufficient or not. And so let's proceed to the statements and assess them because now we know what will help us to be to determine sufficiency. 50% of the students in the class are male, 50% are female. So that statement tells us nothing about the number of female students, neither does it give us any information about those in the history class who are also in the or, or, or also doing economics. It doesn't tell us anything. It only says 50% are female and 50% are male. We could have 10 male students, 10 female students, we can have 50 female students, 50 male students, 100, 200. But then how many of them are measuring? So straight away, you don't even need to uh, do much thought to it and just see that this statement alone is insufficient. Then the next statement says that 50% of all students in the class are measuring in the in, in economics. So of all the students in the class, 50% are majoring in economics. So economics, let's say call it this Y, and then this is also, this also will be Y. That's what it, that's what this means, because 50%, if you add both of them, you should get 2Y, therefore Y over 2Y will give us 50%. So that's what we know. That's what this is telling us, telling us that 50% of all the students in the class are majoring in In fact, it's not even this, this is a different knowledge, because 50% of the students are majoring in economics. How about the female students? Because this matrix, remember, was for female students. So it's not even supposed to be as we are presenting it. It's only telling us about all the students and not even about the female students. It's still far from being close to being sufficient. Because it needs to tell us about the female students and then proportions of both female students or help us be able to get that. But if you have as many possibilities as possible, that makes this statement not sufficient. Therefore, this statement alone also is not sufficient. It's not sufficient. Now that you now that you have those, how about we try and combine these two statements together? Remember, we've been asked about the proportion of students because it's a percentage question. These are not proportion questions. So proportions be very careful. 
fifty percent can actually, or even any percentage can can actually mean any number. So as long as you can be able to get a consistent percentage, then that will actually constitute sufficiency in this question. So if you try and combine those these two, what do we have? Fifty percent of students in the class are male, fifty percent are female. So fifty percent of students in the, of all students in the class are majoring in economics. So if fifty percent are majoring in economics. Does that mean that 50% are all of them that you need to have? That's a question that you need to, which probably, first of all, demystify. 50% are measuring in economics, and then 50% are male. Does that imply that all of them are actually, that actually that portion actually will be consistent throughout? Let's say we have 100 students. So in this case, you'll have 50 female, right? And then also 100 students are 50, 100 students are 50 female, male and female, that is what the first statement says. And the second statement says that how many of them are majoring in economics? 50% out of, so 50 are majoring in economics. Uh, economics, let's, let's level it that way. So from the same same proportion, let's say you have 100 students, 50 of them are female, 50 majoring in economics. From this statement as it is, if 50 are majoring in economics, that means that we can have even just 40 of them, male, 10, female, majoring in economics, right? At the same time, also you can have it vice versa. So therefore you can end up having probably just 10 females, or majoring in economics. If you have told me female are majoring in economics, we don't know how many of them are majoring in history still. At the same time, we can have different numbers. And this could give us, if we flip them, this will give us one will give us uh, 80% and then give us 20%. So you get your multiple answers. So even if you combine them together, it's still not sufficient. And therefore, all things together will not be sufficient. And we should say that. So if not one and two together are not sufficient. So that would, this would be the answer in this case. If you try plugging numbers and, and actually visualize this using now real numbers in actual MC. So that is what the correct answer in this question will be. All right, now let's take it a much higher and, take, and tackle questions which are of a higher difficulty of let's say you know, of 60, uh, 650 to 700 level question. The, these questions, they tend to be have those kind of difficulties simply because a small and smaller proportion of students tend to be less than correct and they therefore rise higher in the difficult level. So that is what this difficulty would mean. But that doesn't really mean these questions are difficult. It just means that they have some hidden aspects that, or that may be overlooked due to human error and so on and so forth. Now let's look at this question. If 60% of employees at company X are female, does company X have more than 100 female employees? That's a question being asked. So we've been told that, from the question stem, we've been told that 60% uh, of employees at company X are female. So let's say all the employees at company X are, is actually X employees, X female employees will be how many? This in the questions term, we'll have it as 0 0.6x as the number of female employees. So, what have we been asked? Does the company X have more than 100 female employees? So, what we've been told is this proportion of, of female employees is it bigger than 100? So, it's 0 0.6x greater than 100. So, that's a question being asked. So, this is more or less is yes, a proportion, but also it's an inequality question, and also it's so sort of like, it could be like a set, but this, if you express it this way, now we can watch and get to know. So if you want to know at all if 0 0.6 X is greater than 100, then that means that X needs to be greater than 100 divided by 0 0.6. Because now we need to have X, we are ones, if we go, six if we go there once, six if we go to 10 ones, and then the remainder is four, if 40 will go six, so how much is six point? Six seven, so x needs to be equal to or greater than one sixty six. 
So if you find x to be equal to greater than 166, then yes, that is sufficient. But if it is not, if it is not, if it falls on either side of that, if it is also less than 166, then also the answer will be consistently no, it will also be sufficient. So if actually we can be able to get this threshold, then we can have a sufficiency. But if you have a situation where we have the number of all employees being less than 166 and the same time also it's possible to have the more than 166, then that makes this that that statement more sufficient. Therefore, let's go and start evaluating your statements one by one. So statement one says that X equals two is greater than 150 employees. Company X has more than 150 employees. So X is greater than 150 employees. Our threshold is X need to be greater than or equal to 166. In this case, what this statement says is that the number of employees can be 151, 160, 170, 171. If it's more than 166, that means the number of employees, the female employees will be more than 100. If it is less than that, it will be less than 100. Since we're having a yes and no scenario in this question, um, it will be not sufficient. Now, the second statement states that company X has 74 more female employees than male employees. What does this mean? So number of female employees, as per the expression you had earlier, as you had seen, is 0.6x. So if 0.6x are the female employees, 0.6x. And then the number of male employees will be 0 0.6. 1 minus 0 0.6, which will be 0.4x. The number of male employees, because it's 1 minus x, to the number of employees. And therefore, the number of female employees exceed the male employees by 74. That means 0.6x minus 0.4x is equal to 74. This means that you have 0.2x is equal to 74. This means x is equal to 740 divided by 2. 2 will go there once, 2 will go there 3, 7, 0. So x is 370. That means x is greater than 166. Hence, the number of female employees will be greater than 100. Is what this means. So this statement alone will be sufficient. And for this reason, the answer choice B remains is the correct answer in this case. So it's all about how you frame the questions and how you approach them, and, and that is how you get the answer. With this being said, thank you for attending the session. Come again next time, and let's do some more practice questions together. Thank you, and bye.